Melbourne Knights travelled out to Galvin Park in Melbourne's southwest on Sunday afternoon to take on Werribee City in PS4 MPL Victoria action. The fixture was an opportunity to maintain the Knights' first spot on the league table before they hosted fellow contenders Bentley Greens next Thursday night. To Team News, and Werribee City made just one but significant change to their side that drew one all with Green Gully last Monday night at Green Gully Reserve. Former Socceroo Simon Colosimo dropped out of the squad altogether after he was substituted in the 88th minute in that previous fixture with Gully. Over to Melbourne Knights and head coach Andrew Marth also made one alteration to his previous squad that defeated Dandenong Thunder last weekend. The club's leading goalscorer Andrew Butashich was rested ahead of the upcoming busy period of midweek games with Stipo Andriyashevic filling his position while Anthony Colosmo was promoted to play out wide. The league leaders got the clash underway as they looked to replicate the 4-2 victory they last enjoyed on this ground. Five minutes into the contest and Sadic was tested for the first time when an Adrian Del Monaco looping header had to be tapped over the bar. But that header preceded a lull in action with the next highlight coming 25 minutes later on the half hour mark when Anthony Colosimo set up Adrian Zara only for the former Perth Glory man to be denied by the Werribee shot stopper. That effort seemed to open up the game with Zara involved moments later but pressure from Sadic killed the passage of play. Many Knight supporters believe that pressure was illegal, with replays showing Sadic didn't touch the ball after coming off his line. Werribee struggled to get in behind the Knights' defensive line and tried their luck from distance in the 35th minute with a Cristaldo effort from outside the box. The Knights found joy with attacks that came through the wing, which was evident just before the half-time break when Colosimo found Alex Deo with a cross from out wide, but the header lacked any real power. Cristaldo tried his luck again from range in the extra time added on to the first period, but again May wasn't overly troubled, which was the goalkeeper and his teammates' last moment of note from the opening half. The second period started off at a much higher tempo compared to the first, with the away side finding the back of the net only five minutes after the interval. A good floated ball into the box from Zara and a neat flick from McGarry set up Andriashevic to strike, but the referee's assistant deemed that the forward was offside at the time of his teammate's header. Up the other end of the pitch, and Werribee's Julian Cassano broke through in the wing, but some good defending from Batur forced him to play a pass more central, which again saw the home side shoot from range, this time through captain Milan Savic, who put his effort just wide of the right post. Savic went just wide not long later, this time after a corner, when his glancing header went wide, but on this occasion of the left stick. Shortly before the hour mark, and the referee was the centre of attention, when two tackles sparked outcry from the two respective sides, with Stephen Kudrick's slide on Andriashevich earning a free kick for Andrew Mark's men, while the Werribee man escaped caution. From that set piece, the Knights finally took the lead. The initial ball in fell to James McGarry inside the area, whose blocked effort then came to Tomislav Uskok, who required two bites of the cherry to put the ball over the line.
That was Uskok's third goal of the season, which puts the defensive midfielder on par with Andrew Barasic as the club's leading goal scorer. Sixty-four minutes in, and the Knights were again denied by an offside flag. This time, after Adrian Zara went one-on-one -on -one with the city custodian. However, replay showed the linesman was correct with his decision. Shortly after that passage of play, and the ever-present Savage found himself in the referee's notebook when a late charge on Knights goalkeeper Chris May warranted a yellow card ending what was then a dangerous move for Werribee. The home side continued to look dangerous moments later, with a good Simon Zapier ball splitting the Knights defence, only for a brilliant Josh Breckolo tackle to snuff out Cristaldo's point blank range effort just outside the six yard box. On the 73rd minute mark, Nino Ragusa's men went inches away from an equaliser, this time when Angus Martin put his looping nod just over the right corner of the goal. But it could have been all over in the 78th minute when the Knights hit the frame of the goal. The ball was forced wide for James McGarry to whip in a cross, which found Dayo at the back post but the midfielder's header cannoned off the top of the post. With less than 10 minutes left on the clock, Werribee finally found the back of the net after squandering their earlier efforts. Anthony Ragusa and Julian Cassano were pivotal to the passage of play, with the latter setting up Simon Zapia to smack the ball into the roof of the net from close range. City's lead didn't last long. In the 85th minute, the home side were lucky not to concede a penalty when the referee brought back play for a previously let go foul. From that free kick, McGarry found Milan Batur for the winner. Werribee did have one last chance to salvage a point from the contest, with goal scorer Zapier stinging the palms of Chris May with an effort from the edge of the box. But that was all she wrote, with the Knights' fantastic start to the season continuing. Sunday's win was the club's fifth league win on the bounce, and means Andrew Marth's men secure their spot on the top of the league with an extra game in hand. Nilsie, that's five wins in a row. What do you think of the game? Oh, look, it's always good to be on the winning team, you know. So uh, we've been doing okay so far. Today was a bit scrappy, and uh, it's good to get away with the win. How do you feel getting on the end of that header for the winner? 
oh look it's always a bit frightening with me scoring goals so no nah, it's good to be on the winning like to score the winner but it'll be good to see some of our forward forward scoring a few more goals would be great you do have a record of scoring goals though is that something you try to work on and, and do throughout the season Ah, oh, look uh, we sort of work on a set on our set pieces so I think uh, me and Tommy sort of go up there to score goals, so if, if we can score a few for the year, help out the team, it's a bonus for the team. Yeah, going into the game, wherever you hadn't won a game, and Knights had won all the games, do you think they got up for the occasion? Oh, look, once you're sitting on top of the league, I think everyone comes out to beat you, so it doesn't matter who you are and where you are on the league, under us, they're always going to want to knock off the top side, so we've just got to keep that going and hopefully we can keep winning and that's it. Got a few midweeks, midweek games coming up in quick succession. How do you think the boys will go during that? Oh, look, it's uh, probably playing the three of the hardest teams in the league. Where I think every team's pretty hard to play in this league. So whoever's better on the day sort of wins. So uh, we'll sort of we'll recover. We'll, we'll, I think we're back at training on Tuesday and we'll assess those games from there.